Have you ever tried to carry as a melee in BG Blitz, but just feel like everything is out of your control? You're dealing top damage and you're landing all your kicks, yet you keep seeing that dreaded six letter word, defeat. You start to wonder, is it you or is it your class holding you back? Well today, we're gonna find out, as we've created a comprehensive tier list of all the melee in the game, allowing you to understand which can solo carry the hardest. To start with, let's have a look at Sub Rogue, a class that's been S tier in Battlegrounds since 2005, as they check every criteria of a hard carry. This is because they have high burst damage, allowing them to kill players on their own, excellent utility and control to allow them to solo objectives as well as enable their teammates, stealth, which means they can travel around the map freely without the enemy knowing where they're going to pop up, and strong mobility to tie it all together, resulting in them always being able to be in the right place at the right time. Because really, that's what BG Blitz is all about, having the awareness to not only play objectives, but to also pick apart the best targets in small skirmishes. Rogues might be the best at this, but everyone needs to be doing these two things no matter what. That's why our custom UI package is the most effective way to gain rating in BG Blitz and is available right now for skill cap members. We got you covered with everything you need and even things you didn't even know you needed like special weak auras and omnibar profiles that make tracking enemy cooldowns a breeze. Whether you're a rogue stealing a base or a flag carrier crossing the map, we isolate key information without distracting you from the action, allowing you to make the plays that actually win games. Our package even includes the best nameplate profile for PvP, removing tons of clutter and making it way easier to maximize damage. If you're one of those specs with tons of dots to manage, this is the most effective way to increase your scoreboard damage. And don't worry, our package includes the essentials like battleground enemies and battleground win conditions. Skill cap members get special access to every profile and we back everything up by a rating gain guarantee where we promise you will gain at least 400 rating while using our service. Be sure to check out the discount link below to get started. So as we were saying, Subtlety Rogue really has everything you need for a Blitz class right now. Their mobility with Shadow Steps, Shadow Strike, and Sprints allows them to move around ridiculously fast, which when coupled with constant Vanish remounts that also reset their cooldowns thanks to invigorating Shadow Dust, Rogues just seem to be able to contest every objective on the map. Subtlety is also tuned to do some massive burst right now, so there's no lack of damage when you're forced into small fights. But even if it wasn't able to 100-0 players in a kidney shot with Blind, Sap, Cloak of Shadows, Duel, and Smoke Bomb, Rogues are able to ninja any base they want from literally any other class with only the tiniest amount of assistance. Subtlety Rogues are also excellent defenders as they can take forever to kill so they can constantly spin bases until help arrives. And by sticking your Rogue to defend a base, you can make the enemy team uncertain if they're inking a base or just idling on their own flag, making the whole team play more cautious. Moving on, when it comes to flag carry maps, Subtlety Rogues are also invaluable as they can slow down the flag carrier with constant harassment throughout the match, and even support their own flag carrier by peeling literally every player off them that they can if they aren't needed in the offensive team. In conclusion, Sub Rogue can do everything you need in BG Blitz except off heal, and therefore finds itself in the S tier. Next up, we have Assassination Rogues, who are basically just sub-rogues with half the control but double the damage. Assassination Strength comes from its teamfight damage, as it can spread strong bleeds and poisons on multiple players at the same time, making it a pretty dangerous class in brawls. It can also dish out some deadly burst damage to flag carriers as well with its death mark ability, so when those stacks go high, you can be sure that your Assassination Rogue will seal the deal and win your flag back. However, when it comes to objective play, Assassination does fall short, as it lacks Shadow Dance or the Vanish cooldown reduction that Sub has, meaning that it has far less control. That results in Assassination Rogues only being able to ink sporadically when their cooldowns are available, rather than Subtlety being able to do it pretty much the whole game. Don't get us wrong though, Assassination is still very strong due to its stealth, high damage, tankiness, and utility. It just has a different, more damage focused playstyle. Where you may prefer to play a Sub Rogue on Arathi Basin to constantly ninja bases, you might want an Assassination Rogue on Gilneas to reliably win the team fight. So it just changes based on what map you get. In conclusion, Assassination Assassination finds itself in the S tier, as although it's less CC heavy, its team fight power is absurd and it can still play for objectives just as a slightly weaker variant of sub. For our last rogue spec, we then have Outlaw, which is currently being overshadowed by both Assassination and Sub. Outlaw is in a weird place at the moment, as it just doesn't do the same consistent damage as Assassination, so it's a worse version in teamfights. And it doesn't have the crazy utility or burst that Subtlety has, making winning bases much harder, as your time to kill is pretty long in comparison. 
allowing room for the enemy to come and reinforce. The only saving grace for Outlaw is that it is a rogue after all, and since that kit is so overloaded with stealth, strong defensive, and more crowd controls than I have fingers, it can't ever really be bad for objective play if piloted by someone competent. For these reasons, we're going to be placing Outlaw in the A tier, as it can still get the job done, it's just far worse than the other rogue specs at doing it. Next up are Fury Warriors, who are typically not seen as a great class in Battlegrounds. Fury has a major problem in BG Blitz in that its damage, although very high on certain maps like Silver Shard Mines, revolves around ramping their slaughterhouse stacks to be effective. And when brawls are far less common than small quick skirmishes in Blitz, this isn't ideal on most BGs in the pool. Fury also suffers from a lack of crowd control, relying only on its fear and stuns to be effective, meaning it can't really assist with capping bases all that well, and in a similar vein, it just kinda sucks at defending bases too, as once its trinket is gone, the base follows along with it. Finally, as for Fury's mobility, it can spec into Barbarian, allowing it to have two leaps in quick succession, so it's not the worst. But when you have poor defensives and lackluster 1v1 capabilities, it's no use bounding over to bases that you're just going to die on. All in all, although Fury does have high damage potential, it's just a bit of a team fight bot finding itself in the B tier. As for Arms Warriors, they are in a very similar position to Fury Warriors, despite recently being buffed. This is because Arms Warriors are just a class that's very heavily reliant on dealing sustained pressure. Anyway, unlike Fury, Arms can swap targets fairly frequently, as they aren't limited by Slaughterhouse, so there is more variance to what they can do in a fight. Picking the right target is the tricky part though, as you will need to see active defensives and track debuffs, which is 10 times easier with the custom nameplate and add-on profiles available only to skill cap members. As far as their objective play goes, sadly ARMS is lacking in the CC department, so you won't be ninja capping anything anytime soon. And in those 1v1 scenarios on bases, with their lack of self heals, you're going to find yourself struggling against most classes. Finally, the mobility and utility ARMS is bringing to the table in Blitz is also very average compared to that of a hybrid or a rogue. Leaving ARMS as just a teamfight bot with less mobility than Fury but with more swap potential, so we'll be placing it next to Fury in the B tier. Moving on, we then have the kings of utility with Rhett Paladins. With Blitz being so heavily objective based, it should come as no surprise that Rhett's can perform fairly well on a bunch of maps. They can escort flag carriers with their freedoms, blessings of protection, and sacrifices allowing them to get through choke points. They can win out those skirmishes with their off healing by basically acting as a secondary healer while dealing damage at the same time. And finally, Rhett's also have some amazing crowd control that can allow them to ninja bases on their own with Hammer of Justice, Repentance, and the cheesiest of them all, the Searing glare cap. The only thing holding Rhett's back at the moment is their damage, which is way below average, and their abysmal mobility which makes completing objectives very difficult, unless you have the foresight to constantly be in the right place at the right time. In conclusion, Rhett Paladin has a lot of potential as a class, but right now it's just not got the damage to back it up, lending itself to the B tier for the average player. Next up we have Survival Hunters, which tick all the boxes of a strong carry melee with their strong utility, damage, and stealth, yet on the latter they aren't seeing results. This is mainly because they are just flat out worse than Marksmanship Hunters while fulfilling the same role. Their damage is weaker and more rampy, meaning they can't just snipe enemies down in an instant, instead they have to kill with consistent damage, which makes them worse in teamfights and small skirmishes. They also have not the best 1v1 potential, as they are a male class that wants to be in melee range, meaning that one one small misplay can result in them biting the dust, and quite frankly, survival's just pretty hard to play because of their melee range hybrid dynamic, so the average player can't pick it up as easy. But as we said earlier, survival does have some crazy potential as it has the crowd control to ninja bases or shut down healers in fights. It has stealth so it can appear on objectives and contest them either alone or with a partner, and of course it can defend very well with its pet. Therefore, it's a great asset on maps like Gilneas or Eye of the Storm. But overall, survival is just a poor man's marksmanship hunter right now, cementing itself in the B tier. Next up, we have Unholy Death Knights, who tanked some pretty hefty nerfs to their diseases last week. Because of this, their godly AoE damage has fallen off slightly, however they are still very strong in single target and in small skirmishes due to their ridiculous burst with Unholy Assault. The Death Knight kit makes Unholy incredibly strong harassers, as by having access to Defiles, Snare, Death Grip, and Chains of Ice, they can stop players moving across the map with ease, making them perfect for shutting down enemy flag carriers before they get back to base, which is also invaluable on other maps such as Silver Shard Mines as they can prevent several players leaving at one time. Their crowd control also allows them to set up kills on their own as by having access to Strangulate, Blinding Sleet, and Stuns, they can cross CC on their own pretty easily. Moving on, Unholy also has fantastic base defending skills with its permanent ghoul, icebound fortitude, and self-healing from Death Strike, so you're not going to be losing your node anytime soon. 
Just be sure to monitor enemy cooldowns so you can make trades at the right time, which is super easy with our weak aura and omnibar profiles. And as for their mobility, Death Charge's 100% sprint is actually fairly solid, so they aren't exactly waddling around as much as you may think. But their main mobility strength is that their damage is all ranged, so even if you manage to get away from the Death Knight, they are still putting up pressure. The only thing Death Knight's really lacking in BG Blitz is a stealth to move around, but since it checks all the other boxes of strong damage, high utility, and decent mobility, we'll be placing it in the A tier. Now, when it comes to Frost Death Knight, although they are very similar to Unholy, they are just significantly worse. This is because their damage profile is very cooldown based and requires melee range, so once you escape them, they aren't going to be doing too much. Frost Death Knights also have a much worse time in 1v1s, as they can't really heal themselves with Death Strike without sacrificing a ton of their own pressure at the same time. And since their pet isn't permanent like Unholy's, they can't exactly defend in the same way. It's not all terrible for Frost though, as they still have that great Death Knight kit with snares and grips, but with their lack of damage, they find themselves in the B tier. Havoc Demon Hunters, on the other hand, have just received buffs to a bunch of their main abilities, turning a powerful Blitz class into one even stronger. This is because Havoc is the king of mobility, so they can appear anywhere on the map to contest objectives at a moment's notice, or even act as a flag carrier if needed, especially because of their glide ability, allowing them to jump off buildings and quickly get to their own base. Moving on, Havoc is also very strong in 1v1s, as they have short, powerful defensive cooldowns and stuns, meaning they can lock their targets down and kill them before they take too much damage themselves. And if all that wasn't enough, Havoc has one of the most overpowered abilities in the game with Spectral Sight, so when accompanied by a partner, they can turn the meta on its head and ninja cap stealth classes without much hassle. Because of Demon Hunter's high damage, crazy mobility, and 1v1 potential, it earns itself a spot in the A tier. Moving on, we have Windwalker, who while having a ton of mobility, aren't performing particularly well. Windwalkers are currently not doing the most damage in PvP, as their burst is tied to long cooldowns like Storm Earth and Fire and Schwen, meaning they struggle to just turn up to a fight and have pressure. Furthermore, their crowd control of paralysis has been nerfed to a 3 second duration, so even though they can travel around the map pretty fast with their rolls and torpedo, they can't exactly ninja a base with its 4 second cap time alone. And when it comes to defending, well, outside using their biggest burst cooldown, to spin the base, there's really not a lot they can do to win a 1v1. The only saving grace Windwalkers really have is that they can be decent flag carriers, as they are basically just discount Mistweavers. And if they take orbs on Kamogu, they can be a massive pain to take down as people can't really catch up to them. Finally, they can get some great value with their other crowd control of Ring of Peace by putting it in doorways to prevent the enemy team getting through. But outside these niches, Windwalker is just pretty below average, leaving it to sit in the C tier. When it comes to Enhance, you shouldn't be surprised that it's struggling right now. Enhance at its core is a melee class which requires high uptime to be effective, but in a game where everyone has infinite mobility and you just have a Leap and Ghost Wolf, that uptime is hard to come by. You're also wearing mail while battling it out against plate classes, so you're incredibly squishy too, making it hard to get anything done. Finally, although it has a niche of being a hybrid, their heals aren't really that significant, and its crowd control of Hex and Lasso aren't exactly winning any awards, since you can't press buttons in Lasso, and Hex just gets dispelled by most classes. All in all, Enhance is just a teamfight bot with low damage potential and not much else to it, putting it in the D tier. Finally, we have Feral Druids, who much like rogues, tick every single criteria we have. They can move around the map with ease thanks to their undetectable prowl and crazy movement speed increases, meaning they can always turn up to objectives whenever they want, giving them a massive presence no matter the BG. Because of all this movement speed, Feral can also flag carry in a pinch, especially because of their wild charge ability allowing them to leap, however, you would still rather have them duking it out in the fight. This is because Ferals are currently packing some absurd single target and AoE damage, which means they are a menace in any team fight or skirmish, with a good Feral having very little counters in a 1v1 one scenario, which is perfect for base maps. And while we're on the topic of skirmishes, Feral also brings some good healing with it too, allowing it to keep itself and its teammates alive in these small fights, meaning you often don't need to commit healers to certain nodes as the Feral will have you covered. As for crowd control, Ferals are also not lacking in this department. This is because with Cyclone, Roots, and 3 stuns in their kit, Ferals are able to CC cap bases alone, since the cap timer is only 4 seconds long. It's not all great for Ferals though, as they do have one glaring weakness, as it's just not that good at defending, due to it not having having any pets or abilities to spin the flag with once its trinket is gone. But honestly, to some of you, this has probably sold you on Feral even more, as who is really queuing just to sit on a base for 10 minutes? In conclusion, Feral is basically just a sub rogue who trades crowd control and utility for healing output and higher damage, earning itself a spot in the S tier. So here's our final tier list for melee in BG Blitz, with Subtlety Rogue being the winner of the absolute best melee as it can have 
the most impact by killing flag carriers, assaulting bases, slowing the game down, and creating kill opportunities all on its own. But remember, every class can have a high impact by playing objectives well and doing high damage. If you're a skill cap member, you'll have an instant advantage thanks to the number one UI for all of PvP, which is now compatible with BG Blitz. Our package includes the number one nameplate profile for PvP, tailored for every spec, making it a breeze to top damage. Everything is covered from BG timers, objectives, cooldown tracking, and more. Skill cap members get special access to every profile, and we back everything up by a rating gain guarantee, where we promise you will gain at least 400 rating while using our service. Be sure to check out the discount link below to get started. For now, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.